Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for GTC Digital. We've been working hard from home to bring you this webinar, and as you know, the work from home experience comes with its own challenges, and so we appreciate your understanding as we bring you this today. As such, here's some tips that can help make this event as best as it can be. To maximize the quality of this audio stream, please close any open applications aside from your browser window. Also, a good old-fashioned browser refresh can cure many ills. So if your audio sputters or the slides seem to be lagging, give that a try first. And then um, you can also try opening this same event in a different browser. So then lastly, if you encounter any other technical issues today, please let us know in the Q&A box and we'll try to trouble troubleshoot with you in real time. Now, without further ado, I'll turn the event over to our speaker. Chin, please begin the presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you today for joining. My name is Chintan Shah. I'm the product manager at NVIDIA, and I manage uh, several of AI toolkits. And today, I'm going to talk about different tools that we have that will help you train, build, and deploy your intelligent video analytics application at the edge. So, what are the major challenges with uh, intelligent video analytics? Number one, to create an intelligent system, you need AI. And creating highly accurate and reliable AI is difficult. It's an iterative process that requires a lot of good label data. And obtaining this data is time consuming and expensive. Models are trained and retrained continuously. So how do you create this highly accurate AI? Second challenge is how do you achieve high throughput especially on the edge. Due to bandwidth limitation, you want to process as much as possible on the edge and only send vital information upstream. When you deploy this AI application, you not only want to achieve high throughput, but also be able to generate real-time insights. Increasing the number of streams per device reduces overall cost for your customer. And besides AI, there are a lot of other high computing processes that are involved in video analytics. And finally, the last major hurdle is at-scale deployment. Deploying and managing tens, hundreds, or thousands of edge devices is challenging. Physically connecting to the edge device is not always possible. So you need a way to orchestrate and manage all these appliances from a central location, and you need to do it securely. In this talk, I'll talk about how you can use various NVIDIA tools to create highly accurate AI, build AI applications that can achieve high throughput and real-time inference, and then finally show you how you can deploy this application at scale. First, let's jump into how to create AI training. To create AI, you need to collect lots of label data. One option is you can start training from scratch with your data set. This is like, think of as building a house with all the raw material. You start with nails, woods, bricks, cement, and you start building everything from scratch. Although it can be done, it's rather time consuming and not scalable. Better option would be to build your house with some pre-built material. Similar concepts can be applied to machine learning and deep learning. You can build your model from scratch or you can apply transfer learning to build using pre-trained models. Transfer learning is a process of transferring learned features from one model to another. Surprisingly, you can use a model that was trained to recognize people to recognize cats with some images of cats. The key benefit of transfer learning is you require lesser data to train an accurate model as compared to if you were to train from scratch. Later on, I'll show you how accurately you can train with the limited data set by applying transfer learning. And because you, need a, not, because you only need a small data set, you spend less time collecting the data set, which lowers your overall cost. And then in addition, you can also train much quicker with a small data set. To apply transfer learning, we have released a toolkit called Transfer Learning Toolkit to help developers, data scientists, and AI engineers train their networks quickly and efficiently. This is the entire uh, TLT software stack. At the top of the stack, these are the things that can be done with the uh, transfer learning toolkit. 
This toolkit is geared for developing quick and accurate AI models. You can use TLT to add or remove classes to an already trained model. Let's say, for example, a model detects cars, trucks, and buses, but you want to add a fourth class to detect ambulance. This can be easily be done with TLT. TLT can prune models. Pruning removes parameters from the model to reduce the overall size of the model without compromising the accuracy itself. And finally, you can do scene adaptation. Adapt the network to your data set, to your point of view, your camera angle. To train with TLT, we have provided more than 25 free trained models to get started. These models are available on NGC, NVIDIA's cloud registry. Models are available for object detection and image classification. These models provide a good starting point for someone looking to start their training. TLT consists of just few configurable steps to train. This includes data preparation and augmentation, train, and prune. I'll cover the workflow in detail in the next slide. TLT runs on top of uh, Keras training framework, but for an end user, this is completely abstracted away. The user only needs to modify an easy to use configuration file to get started. And this toolkit sits on top of NVIDIA CUDA X stack. This includes all the lower level libraries at NVIDIA. NVIDIA container runtime to use uh, GPU acceleration from inside the container. CUDA and CUDNN library for all the parallel processing and solving DNN equations. TensorRT for model export for inferencing. And finally, all of this runs on top of NVIDIA computing platform. Models trained with TLD can be deployed on edge-based DGX server. These models are trained on, on DGX mach machine. These are supercomputer in a box, or it can be trained in one of the cloud instances with a GPU, or it can also be trained on your workstation with an NVIDIA GPU. Here's a workflow of how to train using TLT and pre-trained models. TLD consists of just five commands. Data augment, train, prune, evaluate, and export. In this workflow, it is assumed that the data set is your own. You first start by pulling the container and the pre-trained model from NGC. Next, you take your data set and augment your data set. Augmentation enhances your data set to significantly improve accuracy, especially if you have a small data set. The spatial augmentation supported by TLT are image rotation, zoom in, zoom out, image shift. You can also apply color augmentation, such as color shift, hue rotation, saturation, and contrast adjustment. Now, once you have the augmented data set, you can start your training. After initial training, you value the model against the validation set. If accuracy is acceptable, then you move on to the next step, which is model pruning. If not, then you go back and adjust your hyperparameters and restart training. Pruning removes nodes that the algorithm thinks doesn't contribute to the overall accuracy. And I'll talk more about this later. So despite of uh, that, model pruning will result in some loss of accuracy. So the next step after pruning is to retrain to regain the accuracy lost because of pruning. And after retraining, you evaluate again to see if you have gained back the accuracy that was lost. If you're not able to gain the accuracy, then you go back and adjust the pruning threshold, reduce the pruning threshold, and repeat or restart again from the beginning. Maybe you, need, you might need to increase your data set. And once you finally deem that the model is good enough for deployment, you export the model for inferencing. Here you can generate an intake calibration table to do inferencing using intake precision. This highlights the entire workflow from taking a pre-trained model from NGC with your own data set to generate an accurate model that is suitable for your use case. So now let's assume you are assigned to train a 20 class classifier with a thousand images per class. This is a rather small data set to accurately train one option is to train from scratch with your 20,000 images, or other option is to train using transfer learning toolkit and the pre-trained model. As you can see with the blue line, when you're training from scratch, 
you can achieve about 60% accuracy. Good, but not great. Let's see if you can do better. Now, if you take the same 20,000 images and use one of the pre-trained models, you start seeing close to 80% to 90% accuracy without even increasing your data set. As you can see, when applying transfer learning, you can drastically increase the accuracy from 60 to 80% without increasing the data set. And this was done on a ResNet-18 classifier network. In fact, you can use transfer learning to transfer weights to a completely different domain. Model pruning, as I mentioned earlier, is a technique where model size is reduced by removing connections. It is popular in decision tree where certain connections are removed by traversing the graph and omitting connections. Pruning algorithm is an NVIDIA proprietary algorithm that I feel is one of the key differentiators between TLT and other training frameworks. Pruning can help increase the number of inferences per second, increasing your overall throughput. Pruning reduces the number of parameters by an order of magnitude, leading to models that runs many times faster for inference. Pruning is a two-part approach. First, you have to prune the model. When you prune, you will lose some accuracy. But the second step is you quickly retrain to gain back that accuracy. So the graph on the right highlights the key benefits of pruning. On a ResNet 18 network, we were able to reduce the memory by more than 6x by pruning, which translated into more than 2x increase in our inference throughput. Again, this is very much network and, and uh, data set dependent, and improvements can vary based on the type of network architecture and, the data, and your data set. Overall, pruning is very effective in increasing your overall channel density for inference. In TLT 1.0, which was released last year, we started with few models, and now we're building on top of that by adding newer model architecture. In 1.0, we started with basic ResNet, PGG, GoogleNet, MobileNet, and SqueezeNet uh, as our backbones for classifier. For detection, we started with our NVIDIA's DetectNet P2 network and an alpha version of faster RCN and SSD. We are adding larger and complex classifier, classifiers such as ResNet 34, ResNet 101, and Darknet 19 and 53 to our TLT roadmap. In addition, we are adding new detection algorithms. In the future, we'll support the uber popular YOLO v3 network as well as RetinaNet and DSST networks. All the detection network will support most of the backbones. YOLO v3, SSD, and faster RCNN are three of the top networks based on the number of projects that are on GitHub. And we feel very confident that most developers and data scientists will be able to use this network for their own use case. All of these models were trained on Google Open Image dataset with close to half a million images. Jupyter notebooks are provided in the container for developers to get started with training. And in addition, we have published a step-by-step -step blog that walks through the entire training process with TLT. And in, sum in summary, in the future, we'll have support for most of the popular networks for object detection and classification. In addition to the networks shown on the previous side, slide, we are also looking to add several highly accurate purpose-built networks. These are application-specific networks that can be retrained or deployed out of the box. These are trained on millions of our own proprietary images. We have spent years collecting images, labeling them, and training on these. We feel this provides an excellent starting point for a specific application. The PeopleNet model is trained to detect people in many different environments at different camera angles. This model can be used to build applications such as people counting or generating heat maps. The traffic cam net model, this can recognize cars, bikes, pedestrian, and road signs. This is very useful for smart city applications where you want to track cars on the road for traffic analysis. Dash cam net 
is uh, collected on images from a dashboard inside a camera. These are useful for auto application where you want to create an alert based on what is happening in front of the car. The vehicle type and vehicle make are, type, are useful for smart city application where you want to categorize cars on the road. And finally, the face detect IR model is extremely accurate model to detect face right in front of the camera. And this can be used for auto applications for to monitor drivers in a car. And these, all of these models will be distributed on NGC and you'll be able, you will be able to train them, retrain them using transfer learning toolkit. Also, you're more than welcome to use this model as is out of the box without any training. And finally, for smart city and smart retail type of application, we feel these models will make your job of training highly accurate AI much easier. This chart shows the inference performance of two of these high purpose-built models, traffic camnet and dash camnet. This is running on NVIDIA T4 with a batch size of 64 and uh, intake precision. The performance are shown for both an unpooled model and a pooled model. These two networks use Detector V2 as detector with uh, Resident 18 as a feature extractor. The performance, the inference performance for the unpruned, unpruned model is almost identical for both networks. For traffic cam, we're seeing about 2x increase in inference throughput going to a pruned model. This means that without any optimization in your code, you can increase your channel density by two, which is significant. You can do even better with dash cam net. The improvement we are seeing is about 3x. For dash cam net, we, we are able to, uh, uh, we are able to prune much more aggressively, thus giving a higher improvement on our inference. Pruning depends a lot on your model architecture as well as your data set. We suggest using a large data set if you want to prune aggressively. This is because if you try to prune aggressively on a small data set, then when you retrain, you might start overfitting on your training data set. So it's ideal to use a large data set when you, when you want to do an aggressive pruning. All right, now let's switch gears. Now that you have learned how to use TLT to create AI, now let's dive into how to build high-performance applications. After creating a model, the next step is to create an application which consumes this model for real-time analytics. What you see here is a very high-level view of what a typical IBA graph looks like. And due to bandwidth requirements and the need for real-time data, a lot of the heavy lifting has to be done on the edge. From pixels to insights, pixels from the camera are captured, decoded, and processed. Decoding the streams into frame is a fairly compute-intensive task, and it can become a bottleneck if not done, if done inefficiently. Pre-processing, such as changing the resolution, the color space conversion, before infants can also hog up computing resources and add latency. And after pre-processing, the next step is to apply AI. This is where you get insights from the video. This needs to be done efficiently on the GPU to maintain a high throughput. And then finally, after generating insights, you send this metadata to a data center or cloud. This is the edge to cloud component where messages needs to be exchanged between the edge and cloud. This pipeline for processing and understanding video is industry agnostic. And in the next few slides, I'll show you how to create this workflow efficiently with DeepStream. The DeepStream SDK is a streaming analytic toolkit for AI-based video and image understanding. With DeepStream, you can build efficient edge application that allows you to do real-time AI. This is the entire software stack from application level all the way down to the hardware. At the very top is the application layer. DeepStream application can be built using native C, C++, or can also be built in Python using 
deep chain Python binding. A lot of AI deep learning community uses Python and to enable more developers, we're bringing full capability with Python. Now you can completely build your applications in Python. Under the application layer is the SDK. The core SDK con consists of various hardware accelerated plugins that provide the highest throughput for any computer vision and IDA application. These are plugins for hardware accelerated decode, encode, and other processing tasks. For deployment, customers can deploy their application using bare metal systems, or they can deploy in cloud native container using NVIDIA container runtime. We are continuously improving our SDK, and one of the features that we are adding is a support for bi-directional IoT message. This allows the cloud to control and configure deep stream application running on the edge. Over-the-air model update is also a new feature that we are looking to add. This allows for instantaneous model update while the application is running. In addition, we provide several reference application and helms for container orchestration to kickstart your IDA projects. The next level of the stack is the CUDA X stack, which lists various software technology and lower level libraries that are used by the DeepStream plugins. This includes CUDA, TensorRT, Triton Instant Server, and Multimedia Library. And finally, at the very bottom is a full hardware stack that can be used to deploy DeepStream applications. This includes the NVIDIA Container Runtime and Kubernetes on GPU. And for deployment platform, DeepStream can be deployed on any NVIDIA Jetson device or any T4 or V100 GPUs. The thing that is common across all of these industry is you need to process pixels from camera to inside. The type of application might differ, but the flow remains common across all the use cases. Some application might require the processing on the edge, either on an edge device, such as NVIDIA Jetson, or on on-prem servers like NVIDIA EGX with T-Force. The use, the use case can be in security, ranging from a small business to a large building such as an airport or shopping mall. Cameras are used in retail. These are used to understand your customer behavior, to automate a checkout system for loss prevention and others. Cameras in a, at a construction site can be used to monitor worker safety. Cameras in manufacturing can be used to detect defects, the really tiny ones which are impossible for humans to detect. DeepStream offers the streaming and analytic toolkit to efficiently process and understand video across many industries. And in an AI system, networks are constantly trained and deployed. Training generally happens in the cloud. You can use TLT or other training framework to train your network and deploy on the edge running DeepStream. The insights and metadata collected on the edge is then sent to the cloud. DeepStream supports sending data over open source Kafka, AMQP, or MQTT message broker. Or you can use one of the IoT services from leading cloud source provider. DeepStream can send messages to Microsoft Azure IoT or to AWS. And finally, the insights collected in the cloud can then be used to generate alert, create visualization dashboard, or used to generate further business insights. This is the DeepStream graph architecture. This is a typical IVA pipeline constructed with DeepStream. DeepStream. Underneath the plugin are the underlying hardware that is used by each of these plugins. The first step is capturing the streaming data. This could come from an RTST stream, from a file, or from a USB or CSI camera. And for capture, next is decode. Decoding is very compute intensive, and so we use any deck hardware accelerated decode from NVIDIA hardware. This is different than the CUDA cores on GPU. So you can be rest assured that the, the core GPU will be completely utilized by AI infancy. After decoding, there might be some pre-processing before inferencing. This could be image conversion, 
in the scaling, cropping, or the stream comes from a 360-degree camera, then you might need to devolve the image. And there are various accelerators for these type of operations. After image processing, you batch the stream before sending it for inference. Batching allows us to utilize the entire GPU efficiently for inferencing. After batching, you send the data for inference. Here you can do object detection, classification, segmentation, semantic segmentation, and this can run on GPU or a DLA, the Deep Learning Accelerator, which is available on Jetson ADX Xavier or Xavier NX. After inference, you might need to track the object for insights, tracking or re-IDing cars on the road, people inside a building, and finally, the last step is output. Here, the options are you can view the video with the, with the bounding boxes, with the metadata, or you can store the video with all the important information, or send just the metadata to the cloud for further analytics. So far, I've talked about the capability of DeepStream, but now let me switch gears and talk about what's coming up on our roadmap for the next version of DeepStream. The features that we provide in the future releases can be divided into, into three major buckets. Usability of the SDK, inference of AI models in IoT-related features. First is how do we improve the usability of our SDK? If you prioritize usability features, based on the feedback that we have received directly from our customers, as well as our developer forms. In improving usability, we want to make it easy enough for our developers to get started with DeepStream. And one of the major things that we are looking to add is the full support for Python. We started with an alpha version of Python, and we got good feedback from the community, and we are fully committed to providing a production-ready path through Python. Other features that we're looking to add are more application. This shows the full capability of the SDK. We have tons of great features, and without a reference application, the user might find it overwhelming to use all the features. The next bucket is AI inference. At its core, Deep, DeepStream is a performant SDK to build AI-based applications. We are constantly looking to increase the models that we support. But that is a rapidly moving target. So we're opening up support to run models natively in a training framework. Our goal is to make it easy for developers and data scientists who are working on these complex AI models to deploy them effortless, effortlessly on our platform. So for that, we are looking at integrating the NVIDIA's Triton inference server with DeepStream. In addition, we are looking to provide a full interoperability between all the models train and transfer learning toolkit with DeepStream. And lastly, that's always connected devices, transmitting data efficiently and securely between the edge devices and cloud is extremely important. With that in mind, we're looking to add tons of IoT features on our DeepStream roadmap. Sending messages from edge to cloud is important, but receiving messages from cloud onto our edge device and, and, active, and acting upon these messages is also very important. With a bi-directional messaging, you can control the edge from the cloud. You can change configuration remotely without physically connecting to it. It can allow you to do over-the-air updates of your deep learning model. Also, with so much data being generated and transmitted, it's very important to do it securely. And we're looking to add some security measures for our IoT communication. Next, I'll go over these features in more detail. For an end-to-end -end workflow from training to deployment, we start with pre-trained models with TLT, train them with your data set use, using the, the transfer learning toolkit. Once trained and true, you export the model. Trained models from TLT will work out of the box with DeepStream. This includes all the new pur purpose-built pre-trained models that I spoke about earlier, as well as some of the most popular models such as YOLO v3, faster RCNN, SSD, it will work seamlessly with DeepStream. 
These models are fully compatible with Tensor RT, NVIDIA's inference accelerated run accelerated run time. Efficient chaining with TLD and real-time inference with DeepStream will give you the highest possible throughput for any video analytic application. As I mentioned earlier, we are fully committed to providing full support to our Python developers. We released an alpha version last year, and based on the general feedback we have received since then, we are improving and extending upon what we provided. In the future, release will provide full support for Python. This means that most of the native C, C++ API will now be supported in Python. In addition to that, we will be adding support for post-processing the tensor data from inference in Python. So what that means to the developer is instead of writing a C routine to parse bounding boxes, now you can take the raw tensor and parse box bounding boxes directly in Python. To get started, we have provided several useful sample application in Python on GitHub, and we'll continue to add more in the future. Some of the notable apps that we are providing are ability to, to, to save an image from a Python. This is useful when you want to save some image data of interest. Now, with the Python API and sample apps, users can incorporate these features to their own application. We'll also look to add an example to take streaming data or RTSP and stream it out over an RTSP. This is a typical use case for a lot of IVA applications, where streaming video comes from an IP camera or an RTSP, and you might need to send it upstream through RTSP. And there are several Jupyter notebooks on GitHub that makes it easy to get started with DeepStream on Python. So up until DeepStream 4.0, the networks needed to be completely supported by TensorRT to work with DeepStream. But we are changing that in the future. We are adding support for NVIDIA Triton Instance Server, formerly known as TensorRT Instance Server. Triton Instance Server is an inference microservice, which, is, which was originally designed for data center GPUs and now will be extended to embedded, G, embedded uh, lines such as Jetson, Inference Server is available in a, in a ready-to-deploy container from NGC. The advantage of Triton Inference Server is it can support almost all the deep learning framework. This includes TensorFlow, TensorFlow TRT, PyTorch, Onyx Runtime, and others. Now, with DeepStream, users will be able to use Triton Inference Server natively from a DeepStream app. With that said, a native TensorRT is still supported and is the is the go-to path for inference if you're really looking for high throughput performance. The downside is TensorRT can be sometimes be limited due to certain layers not being supported out of the box. And TensorRT provides custom plugins to add missing layers, but that is not always trivial. The idea of use case for TensorRT with, with DeepStream is when you're ready to deploy, we recommend converting the model of TensorRT to give you the highest performance. But on the other hand, if you want flexibility of running any network out of the box at DeepStream, and then, uh, then Triton Inference Server is the correct approach. This is usually the case when you're prototyping and you're still coming up with the right architecture. You're experimenting, so, but you don't want to spend a lot of time and effort converting your model to TensorRT. In this case, you can create the entire video analytic pipeline. You get all the benefit of uh, of creating an efficient pipeline, but use Triton Inference Server for inferencing. So in summary, you have a few options to run inference now, and you can decide to see which options work best with your network. Now you have trained the AI, build your awesome app, next you're ready to productize and deploy this application. Now imagine the awesome app that you have built to detect and track cars now needs to be de deployed across hundreds or maybe thousands of edge devices all across the city. Or if your app was to count people in a retail store, you need to deploy this to hundreds of retailers across the country. How would you do this? 
in either of these cases, it's not feasible and sometimes impossible to physically be connected to the edge device. For at scale deployment, you want to be able to deploy apps and control the apps from a central location or cloud. Cloud native applications allows you to scale out, review, develop applications in a container based environment and deploy it as a microservice. Container consists of the entire runtime environment needed to run the application. This includes the code, tools, libraries, settings, everything bundled into this lightweight standalone executable. Container abstracts away the underlying OS and other infrastructure. So first, you start by containerizing your application. Cloud-native platforms like Kubernetes allows you to automate deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. Kubernetes creates this cluster that consists of one master and hundreds of worker nodes. Now, you can take your containerized application and deploy it across thousands of edge devices across the city or across country from one central location. You can manage and update your apps. DeepStream application can also be containerized using Docker containers from NGC. These containers can be orchestrated using Helm. Helm charts can be, uh, you, uh, can be used to manage your Kubernetes package. And to get started, we have released a demo on NGC that uses Helm and Kubernetes to deploy a containerized DeepStream application. Now imagine your application is in production. It's processing on the edge and using AI to generate some insights. It sends this insights, insights back to the cloud. In addition, it also sends other stats, such as health of the device, logs, or errors. It can also transmit multimedia files, such as images or videos of interest. In the cloud, you find that the current model is not performing well under certain conditions. So you retrain and you want to update the model in the edge, or you want to change some parameters. This could be adding or removing a camera source, changing camera settings, changing a region of interest, or maybe you need to pause, resume, or, or, or stop an application. For all of these things, you need a mechanism to receive and act upon these messages on your edge. This requires a bi-directional communication between an edge and a cloud. In DeepStream 4.0, we supported sending messages from the edge to the cloud, but in the future, we will have a bi-directional communication. This will allow DeepStream to receive messages from the cloud and make changes in the application as required. The bi-directional communication will be over the Kafka message broker. And with Kafka Message Broker, DeepStream will be able to subscribe messages from the cloud as well as publish and subscribe mess messages to multiple topics. There will be several applications for our developers to get started with this bi-directional messaging. And once, once we release this, we welcome our developers to take our examples and develop on top of it for your use case. AI is an, is an iterative process. Your model works best on the very first day of your deployment. As more and more corner cases are discovered, the AI model that you deployed will start to perform poorly on this. So you need to collect new data, retrain your model, and then deploy back in a few. This process repeats as you seek to improve the quality of your model. This continuous model update means that you need to communicate to the app running on the edge that a new model is available and ask the app to pick it up. This is where you need the bi-directional messaging functionality, send messages from cloud to the edge. Other use case for on-the-fly model update is you want to change model based on certain time of the day or weather conditions, because certain models might work better under certain lighting conditions. With OTA model update, you can swap to a different model on the fly. So imagine a robot doing inventory management. The robot might need a different model for each aisle because the product SKU in each are completely different. So instead of having a one monolithic model, you have multiple more accurate models that are swapped instantaneously. DeepStream Next will support this over-the-air model update. This means that when the application is running, you can instantaneously swap the model with zero downtime. And this all happens without shutting down and restarting the application. 
This is extremely important for mission critical application where you cannot tolerate any downtime. Another use case for bidirectional messaging is to initiate a record based on a trigger on, a, on the edge device. Let's say, for example, you have a smart city application where you're tracking the direction of the cars on the road. One of the anomaly could be to monitor and flag cars going in the opposite direction. So the way you have architected your design is you do car detection and tracking on the edge using deep shim, and then you send this inside to a data center or a cloud for further analytics. In the cloud, you have an anomaly detection that takes the metadata and looks for anomalies on the road, one being car going in the opposite direction. Once you detect that a car is going in the opposite direction, you immediately trigger the deep stream application to record the event for some finite amount of time. The trigger doesn't necessarily have to come from the car. It could be from any other microservices running on, on the edge. In the future, we'll provide APIs to start and stop recording based on an external trigger. The main benefit of this feature of the selector record is it saves valuable disk space. Imagine in a city with thousands of cameras, recording footage 24 hours a day, which is very expensive and 99.9% .9 of the time it is not needed. Another benefit is, that, is when something interesting happens, instead of reviewing hundreds of hours of footage, you can quickly review a few clips which can save valuable time and there are a lot of other great use cases for a, a trigger-based or smart record system. Lastly, for successful scalable deployment, one of the most important and overlooked aspects is security. Being able to securely communicate between the edge device and the cloud. Security around IoT devices is a growing concern. There's so much data and sometimes sensitive data generated on the edge that you need to you that you want to ensure that you're sending to a trusted location. One of the ways we are looking to bolster our security offering is to provide a support for two-way TLS authentication based on SSL certificates and encrypted communication. The two-way SSL authentication works with uh, the Kafka message broker. The client certificate is generated and stored outside of the DeepStream application. Secure authentication can be configured in the DeepStream app uh, via the message broker plugin. And this two-way TLS authentication is based on a handshake protocol between the client and a server. When the client is ready to communicate, it sends a request to the server. The server sees the request and sends the server certificate. When the then the client verifies this server certificate with the certificate authority. It will successfully verify it will present its own client certificate to, back to the server for two-way authentication. Then the server verifies the client-side certificate, and it successfully verified and acknowledged the client that a successful communication was set up. Only after a secure authentication is established can the client and server begin to communicate. So finally, I would like to close this talk by recapping the key challenges in NVIDIA software solutions in building an end-to-end -end intelligent video analytics solution, from training all the way to deployment. Creating highly accurate and reliable AI is challenging. You need to retrain and train on lots of data. Now, with NVIDIA's transfer learning toolkit and a collection of pre-trained models, you can be on your way to creating highly accurate AI. For smart city application, for smart retail use case, you can use either of the highly accurate and proved purpose-built network, such as people detect, traffic cam, face detect out of the box, or you can retrain with your own data set to get even higher accuracy for these for your use case. For other use, use case, you can use our generic pre-trained model of some of the most popular network architectures, such as YOLO, P3, faster RCNN, SSD, and others. The pre-trained networks and PLT containers are all available on, on NVIDIA NGC. Building an efficient pipeline to process and use AI on video stream is not trivial. 
There are lots of hardware level optimization that can help improve performance. The DeepStream SDK, we have done a lot of heavy lifting to get you the highest channel density. With efficient memory management and hardware accelerated plugins, you can be rest assured that you'll get the maximum throughput. And it's never been easier to get started with DeepStream. In the future, with the full support of Python and Triton Imprint Server, you can quickly prototype and, and uh, recreate your full video analytic pipeline with a very little effort. There are lots of great sample applications in C, C++, and Python to get started. And we are constantly looking to add feature and features and applications. And finally, for at-scale deployment, you need to manage and orchestrate hundreds of thousands of edge devices from a central location or cloud. Building cloud-native applications using container and orchestrating with Kubernetes platforms allows you to scale out. The DXM application can be built in cloud-native com containers and deployed with Kubernetes. Once deployed, the application needs to send metadata and other information to the cloud and be able to receive instructions and messages from the cloud. DeepStream with its bi-directional messaging capability allows for these level of communication. And then with SSL authentication, now you can be comfortable sending your messages securely to a certified server. So in summary, use the transfer learning toolkit and tree chain model to train AI, use DeepStream to build your application and use Kubernetes and IoT features to deploy your AI applications. So get started today on building your AI models with, with TLT and deploying these applications using DeepStream. And stay tuned for the next version of uh, DeepStream and Transfer Learning Toolkit. Here are some important developer resources to get started. A few months ago, we released a, a free soft-paced course on DLI, get it on getting started with DeepStream on Jetson Nano. It's an introductory course, and if you have never used DeepStream, it's a great course to get started and learn how to build your video analytic pipeline. And finally, we'll have uh, several connect with expert sessions for both, for both DeepStream and TLT next week. TLT Connect with Experts session is scheduled for tomorrow, Friday, March 27th, from 2 to 3 p.m. DeepStream Connect with Experts session is scheduled for next Friday, April 3rd, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. You'll get a chance to interact and ask technical questions directly to our technical leads and engineers who work on building this technology. And with that said, I'll pass it to Rachel for to get started on Q&A. Great. Thank you, Chintan. What a great presentation. Um, just as a note, um, for those of you who saw the last slide with all those links and are wondering how you can get those, um, a PDF of the presentation is um, going to be available on the session catalog, so you can go back there and find that um, in the next day or so. Um, just a reminder, uh, you can ask a question using the Q&A window. Um, to the right of the pre slide presentation. And uh, we'll give Chantin a little moment to look over the questions. And um, please begin when you're ready. Thank you. Uh, 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 first question I, I received was, how can we create our training data set of image for specific purpose if the available uh, one for Google, Microsoft, and NVIDIA are not good enough? Uh, so this will be this will require you to, to either uh, uh, collect your own data set. Uh, this could be just collecting images or buying a uh, data set from, from uh, from companies. There are several companies who who label data sets, who provides a uh, uh, data set for us as a service. So you can work with those companies to get those data sets. Uh, 
Another question is, what is your opinion about darknet pre-trained networks? Are they good enough for generating uh, deployable object detection models? Uh, the answer is, uh, it depends on, on what is the use case. And uh, lo I mean, the, the, the darknet uh, models that uh, pre-trained networks that we provide uh, are uh, over, a, uh, over a large collection of images. So if you want to take that and if you want to apply it for, for, for your use case, you will need to provide your own data set to make it usable. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's not going to be very useful for, for, your data, for your use case. Uh, one question is, what is the most promising pruning algorithm you recommend? Uh, so actually, we don't uh, uh, specify which particular pruning algorithm. Uh, we have a, our own proprietary pruning algorithm that is part of TLT. So if you use the transfer learning toolkit, you can actually use the uh, the pruning functionality functionality within the within the uh, within the uh, framework. And similarly, same same applies for for Intate as well. So TLT has a way to to uh, export uh, Int8 precision as well. Uh, one question is: Is Jetson Nano ready to run in production? Uh, yes, Jetson Nano is uh, ready to be run in production, and uh, DeepStream, uh, in fact, even DeepStream on Jetson Nan Nano is for production. Uh, one, can you share the link of this demo to deploy DeepStream app using Helm? Uh, so the link is actually in the uh, the link is. Uh, in the uh, the deck itself. So when you download the deck, the link should be on there. Uh, do you have any suggestions on how you would convert a prototype running on Triton infant server to Tensor RT for production? Uh, so for that, uh, there are uh, examples on, on on Tensor RT to convert a model. So for example, uh, uh, there's a for TensorFlow, there's a TF to TRT for PyTorch, there's Py to TRT, and then I, I believe for and Onyx runs directly with TRT as long as all the layers are supported by TensorRT. So there's uh, multiple uh, different uh, scripts that are available to for each framework. Uh, one question, what is smart record? So smart record is the way for you to control when to start and stop your record. And uh, the way in the what the way it works in DeepStream is DeepStream provides API, and uh, you as a as a user of this particular feature will have to will have to send a request uh, to to start and stop the record. So the 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 smart part would actually have to to the decision part would actually have to come from you of what is the criteria to start and stop the record. But you should will provide API for 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 that. Uh, does TLT handle quantization as well? 
Uh, yeah, so we don't support uh, 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 quantize aware training at the moment, but it is uh, on our roadmap to, sub- to, be, to support in the future. Uh, do you have uh, IR pre-trained models? So one of the uh, the purposeful pre-trained model for for face detect is for IR, and uh, it is specifically trained on uh, on IR data set. Uh, where can I find where can I find the Jupyter notebook to get started with DeepStream Python? So the Jupyter notebooks are actually uh, part of uh, our GitHub repo. So if you search uh, NVIDIA AI IoT repo on Google and then when you scroll down, there's a there's a, a section for DeepStream Python apps. That's where you'll see all the Python apps that we released uh, uh, in our uh, alpha version of Python and you know a couple of Jupyter notebooks there. Uh, can you comment on the uh, uh, performance of Python apps compared to C, C++? The perf of Python app depends on, uh, basically depends on what kind of processing is done in Python. Uh, heavy processing in Python will introduce performance degradation as compared to a native C. Uh, one question is how to set up a uh, deep stream development environment on Linux or Windows. Uh, so deep stream is uh, not supported on, on Windows and to set up the deep stream environment on, on Linux, uh, please refer to the deep stream development guide. What is OTA model? OTA stands for over the air update. And uh, uh, this is uh, useful when you want to uh, uh, update either a model or, or a certain config or, or, or the application uh, from, from a cloud or uh, running on the edge. Uh, one question is, are there integrated containers with, uh, with both TLT and DeepStream? Uh, no, right now they're separate containers. They're actually two different tools you use for different application. One is TLT is, uh, is focused for training, which generally happens on, on one of our large training GPUs. And, uh, and uh, the model that is exported will run on DeepStream, uh, which is more for, for inference or deployment, which can run on on uh, Jetson or or any of our T4 GPUs. Uh, has any DeepStream application been deployed out of the box on Nano? DeepStream uh, SDK sample apps run on Nano out of the box, and to use this app sample models. Uh, check out the uh, development guide and where you will see uh, uh, performance for Nano. So uh, we have one, I'll take one more question and we are about to wrap up. But I'll, uh, one thing I would like to, to say is we have connect with expert sessions for both uh, TLT, which is tomorrow, and for DeepStream is next Friday. So I highly recommend uh, signing up for those if you, if you haven't already. And last question is, how to use custom TensorFlow models and Python code with DeepStream? And uh, the, to run con- TensorFlow models directly natively, you will have to use the, the new feature, the Triton 
inference server with DeepStream with the, the upcoming Python binding. And with that, uh, thank you everyone for joining. Great, thank you. And thank you all again for joining us for this session of D GTC Digital. Um, we, we appreciate your time and all of your questions as well. Um, an on-demand version of this webinar will be available in about an hour after this event ends, and you can access that using the same link that you used to access this live event. Um, this link um, will expire in about 48 hours. So after that, you can go back to the session catalog and you can find um, a video recording of it, um, the PDF, and all the other materials. Uh, um, in relationship to this this seminar. So um, with that, I'll thank you all again for joining and wish you all a great day.